Hello, thank you for joining me today. This is episode one. You are getting in on the ground floor of, of this new series. This is, I'm still playing around with the name, but get ready with me, chit chat, where we're gonna take trips down memory lane of places that I have visited. Because I don't know about you, I know some people are traveling, some people are not. I am not traveling, I haven't traveled in a while, and I thought, you know what, I kind of miss it. So let me take a trip down memory lane. I'm going to look at my photos, going to think about the trip, and why not share it with you guys and see if we've been to the same places and if we like the same things. So if that sounds interesting, then keep on watching. Up first is my very first trip to New York City, my first plane ride. Let's get into it. And the other day I was at Marshall's and I was shocked to find the glam light, the pizza slice palette. And since when I think of New York, one of the things that I think of is some good pizza. So I thought it would be perfect to try this out today. Look at how cute. I mean, I know this isn't a new palette, but new to me, but such cute packaging. And look at the palette. <laughs> it says warning on do not eat. And whoops. Here we have, the black kind of got a little bit all over the place, but that's okay. So, yee -hee, I'm excited. So the year was 1993. The month was May. And even though I had been on vacation before, like we had went on family vacations to like Nashville and Michigan, but I had never flown before. So this was also my first time on an airplane. Remember this was in 93. And we had told the flight attendants that it was my first time flying because of course I was nervous. And they were so nice. They let me go into the cockpit and take a picture with the pilot. The thing that sucks and is kind of weird because my mom lived in New York when she was younger. And most of her pictures from there, I mean, that was you know, this is pre-digital camera era. So most of her pictures didn't turn out. Like anytime she'd go to develop them, they wouldn't turn out. And on this trip, my first roll and my last roll, I'm pretty sure it's been too long now, but I'm pretty sure like they were just white. Like there was nothing there, even though I took the pictures and all the rolls in between there turned out fine. So it wasn't like, oh, I had them, you know, inserted wrong or anything, because why would that be? Just weird. So unfortunately, those pictures did not turn out. And as we all know, now that would never happen. And I'm going to try this trick that I saw online. You get the eyelash curler if you have hooded eyes, and then you put the eyeshadow, or you could do like a concealer, but you line it on here. So then that way this will create a cut crease of where it should be. So we're going to see. We stayed at, it was Howard Johnson on 8th Avenue. And it wasn't necessarily in the best part of town. But, you know, it was okay. We were safe. Nothing happened. That's a little bit more yellowish than I thought it was going to be. By the way, <laughs> my name is Stacy. If you are new here, I would love to have you join me. I plan on doing videos at least three times a week and it's up to you guys because you need to let me know if you think you'll like this series and yeah, we can just do, you know, different travel places. I have been over to Europe or we can do travel and I thought maybe like deep dive into some fashion designers or like fashion and beauty lingo. Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that's a good idea? I thought that it would be fun. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming on back. And I'd love for you to let me know that you are excited about this new series by giving me a thumbs up because that will let me know. YouTube took away. I mean, I still see the thumbs down on there, but you can't see like how many people gave you a thumbs down anymore. So that could be a whole topic in itself 
too about like the mental health and social media topic. But anyway, that is not what this video is today is about. This kind of work, it gives you like the crease above, the crease above your crease. So have you stayed at a Howard Johnson? Isn't it kind of funny the name is called Hojo? Do you call it that? Is it still called that? I think so. I just remember being like in such amazement of the city and just the energy. And even though I had been to Chicago before, it was just, I don't know, do you agree if you've been to both Chicago and New York? Like it's just, they're both big cities, but there's such a different energy in both cities. Um, I don't know, let me know if you agree. I even went to New York again after I had lived in Chicago and I still felt that same thing. Like there's just, I don't know, it's just such a different energy. And of course we ate at Hard Rock Cafe and it's funny because I had in my scrapbook area um, <laughs> the price guide from when we were at Hard Rock Cafe for the souvenirs and you know this was in 93 so I expected obviously the prices are gonna change but they didn't change as much as I thought because the t-shirt like the Skyline t-shirt back in 93 the price was $14 and now it's $27.50 so I know that's quite a bit of jump but we're talking quite a few years here the hat was $12 now they're 20 and key rings was six and now they're 12 so I didn't think considering how many years passed I know how many times can I say that I didn't think that was too bad and I'm very happy that we went to the World Trade Center and then I had an opportunity to go up in the Twin Towers because the next time that I went to New York was in 2002. So I am glad that I got that opportunity to go up in there. Now in February, I don't know if you remember, but in February of 93, there had been a bombing at the Trade Tower. It was uh, somebody had parked a vehicle in the parking garage and they were, this was in May, and they were still repairing some of the areas. I remember seeing some, you know, like cones and like areas where you couldn't go that they were still repairing. And we did go to the observation deck, which was 107 floors up. But I do remember too being amazed at that. I mean, you could just see, I mean, just the vastness of the city and beyond and just such a neat experience. It still just seems so unreal that that happened. I mean, I don't, it's one of those things, you know, I guess for our generation, like that you'll never forget where you were. I mean, I can exactly remember where I was when that happened in 9-11. Oof, that was, I was actually downtown Chicago. If you want another video on my next trip to New York, let me know because the next two trips was in 2002 and 2003. So of course, like we went to the um, Ground Zero site and all that stuff. So I would definitely be talking more about that in a future video if you want. I did go to Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty. And Ellis Island, it's interesting, you can actually go on their website now and they have where you can like search for your ancestors and I haven't done that yet, but I'm actually thinking about it. I don't know, have you ever done that? You know, like did Ancestry or any of those? I think that it would be very interesting. It is estimated that 12 million immigrants were processed through Ellis Island between the years of 1892 and 1954. So then from Ellis Island, we went to the Statue of Liberty, which is on another island. And I kind of wish, so there's an elevator to a certain point, but to get up to the top of where her crown is, you can't take an elevator all the way up there. 393 steps, which, okay. I was a junior in high school, should have been no problem, right? But the steps, as you go, get smaller and smaller and smaller. 
and narrower. I don't like heights. So we started on the staircase, you know, thinking, okay, we'll go out to the top. But <laughs> yeah, we didn't make it up there. Okay, I can't talk and do this, one second. So I ended up just going to the bottom of her pedestal, which was still nice. Like now I kind of wish that I would have just pushed through and went up it because, you know, it had been closed for a while after 9-11 and stuff, but you know, it just, it was too much. I just couldn't do it. I would love to know if you have been to New York, have you ever been up and to the top of the crown? Did you get a chance to go? And how was it climbing those steps? You know, the Statue of Liberty arrived in 350 pieces. And it is kind of cool though, because on their site too, you can take a virtual tour. So I'm kind of started playing around with that. I'm going to go back and look at it. But I thought that was cool. And I remember eating a sandwich in Battery Park. And I don't know, oh, I'm sure that they were in Battery Park at some time. But I remember sitting there thinking like, oh, this totally reminds me of Desperately Seeking Susan. <laughs> Have you seen that movie? That is such an oldie, but I might have to find that again and see if you can watch that on like Netflix or Hulu because it has been so long since I've seen that. Do you know what year that came out? 1985. Isn't that crazy? One night we were walking around and we went, we were outside NBC Studios and you know we had kind of walked, I think we had walked past there the night before and there was nobody famous, but <laughs> as we were walking past this time, okay like I had a thing when I was younger. I mean, who doesn't love money, right? But I really wanted to be rich. Well, spoiler alert, I'm not. But anyway, and so I had like this fascination when I was little with, I would have my mom like drive around and we'd look at houses. And one year for Halloween, I dressed up as a rich lady. Um, so like I just had this fascination and there was limo, a limo park there. So can you see where this is going? Yes, I wanted a picture by the limo. So I'm leaning against it. I had my mom take a picture and this guy comes up and I'm thinking, oh crap, like we're in trouble. But he, I wasn't in trouble. <laughs> he was like, oh, you know, I forget exactly how we started it. But he's like, oh, do you want to get in and pretend like you're getting out? And so I was able to sit in the limo, you know, pretend like I was arriving. And he's like, oh, if you want to wait around, there'll be some people coming out. So of course we waited. And at the time I did not watch Saturday Night Live. So I was not aware of who these people were, but some of the, the other girls in the groups, the group that I was with, some of them were, and they were very excited, ended up being Phil Hartman and Julia Sweeney. Yeah, they took a picture with us. We went to Parsons School of Design because, hello, we were juniors in college on a fashion trip. You have to visit the fashion colleges, right? And we went to FIT, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology. And that was really cool. They actually have a museum at the school too that you can tour. So, you know, we toured the, the school they took us, you know, around, told us about it. Then we got to see the museum. And then we got to go in the back room. And this lady was showing us like their, I'm pretty sure it was that trip and not a place in Europe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, where they showed us like kind of what they had on hand. I mean, the pieces of fashion, collectible clothing that they had. And it was like in a dark lit room, rows and rows of amazing pieces. I mean, such a collection. I would love, love to be able to collect vintage clothing, but that would be, I think, really expensive and could quickly get out of control since I'm a little bit on the borderline of hoarder. Not like messy, dirty, but just, I like stuff. Anyway, <laughs> so that was really cool. 
We went to the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Also Macy's and Herald Square, which is huge, 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 huge. Well, that the first Macy's Day Parade was in 1924. And the store is 10 floors, 10, it's huge. And the length tapes, takes up a city block. I mean, it's just, if you've ever been there, you'll know, like, you know what I'm talking about. It is just massive. So we got to, you know, go on a tour of that and kind of go behind the scenes as well. And then another huge highlight that, oh my gosh, like I was just in awe that we got to do this. So in my fashion class, we would get the teacher, she got a subscription to Women's Wear Daily, WWD, which it's a daily newspaper and it is kind of considered, well, it's like considered like the Bible of the fashion industry. I don't mean that to be like anti, um, what am I trying to say? You know, like make light of religion in the Bible, but like just to kind of give you the scope and the scale of how important this magazine is or newspaper, excuse me. Like, it can make or break a designer. We got to go to their offices. Mr. Fairchild was like sitting in there. We didn't get to meet him, but we got to see him and walk through the offices. And it was just so, so cool. Definitely one of the highlights. I mean, there were so many highlights, but definitely one of them. Newspaper has been in production since 1910. You can get a subscription yourself if you want. For a while, I did have a subscription, but it, you know, as you can imagine, a daily newspaper, it will add up fast. But you can also do a digital one if you want as well. And read some things on their website, not all of the articles. Some of them, you know, you, you would need a subscription, but it is a good source to look at some of the trends. I'm gonna put some concealer up here. I just feel like it got a little, a little grungy, a little dark. And how can you go, you can't go to New York and not see a musical, am I right? So we saw Foul Moon, which was one where the audience like participates, but I was glad like I didn't get picked to be participate or anything. And then we, that was included, like we all went there, but then my mom and I, I don't know if anybody else went with us or not, but we got half price tickets from the Hot Ticks. Those are all over, like they have them in Vegas, you know, too. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, in Chicago. But we got half price tickets to see Cats. That musical opened in 1982. And I just remember being so excited because we had aisles, aisle seats and one of the performers, you know, one of the cats, like came up in the aisle and I remember was just like right there next to me. And like, I was looking like eye to eye with one of them. And it was just, I thought that was just so cool. Really liked that. I do miss going to musicals. When I lived in Chicago, I went to a ton and then just got out of the habit and then got anxious. And it was like, when my anxiety got bad, it was, you know, there's no way I'm feel very fortunate for my high school teacher. I don't know if she'd want me to name her, so I won't, but if she watches, she knows who she is. And I'll say like her class changed my life because before that I was getting D's and didn't care about school. It was like, whatever. And I remember my mom saying, you know, like she didn't even know if I was gonna graduate. I mean, I was not, not on the best path. And then it was a new course out at, we have a career center here where you can take different kind of trade kind of classes and you leave the high school, they, they bus you to this career center and you take your classes there, like mid part of the day. And so this fashion merchandising was a new program and it was in the paper. And I remember my mom saying like, hey, you know, why don't you give this a try? See if you like it. And I signed up and you could go to the career center your junior and senior year. And yeah, I ended up, 
I really liked it and to go on field trips, you know, you had to get good grades. I ended up graduating high school with honors. So definitely this teacher changed, I think it's safe to say like she changed the course of my life. You just never know, you know, what's gonna, what's gonna change your life. And, you know, for any parents out there that have kids that are struggling, like not that it's always that, but you know, I obviously was not applying myself. And once I found something that actually like interested me and saw how it was to get good grades, then, you know, then I wanted it to put forth effort. And yeah, it just totally changed everything. But I was so, feel so fortunate that that happened and so fortunate to go to New York. Look at this mascara, just FYI. This was gifted to me through Octoly. And this is Neogen. Look at this crazy applicator. There we go. Have you flown before? What was your first flight? Where were you going? Now I really, I don't know. I mean, like with this fashion class, we also went in the future, we went to Europe three times, which blows my mind when I think about it. And it's just in Mall of America and Minnesota. But now I just don't know if I could stand flying. I mean, obviously my anxiety was not as bad then. I had never had a panic attack or anything. But man, the way that people are nowadays with what's going on on airlines, like people getting in fights and ugh. I mean, I felt like you were kind of packed in like cattle before. <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know if I could handle flying. So, cause I wanna go back out to California and I wanna go back to New York. But those are some long road trips. So I don't know. I've, we, I have done a road trip to New York, so I know that that is doable. However, I slept most of the trip. So I, I know I don't think I could drive it, but, but I don't know about going to California. I mean, it would be cool because you could stop at places and, you know, make a trip going out there part of the trip, but I don't know. And today for foundation I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury this is the airbrush flawless foundation now the color I got if you're my skin tone was one neutral this was gifted to me through actually I did do some reviews over on Instagram but I like it but this color is too light for me so I would probably recommend if you're my shade getting one shade darker and it is a little bit I have dry skin I'm in my 40s it is a little bit drying on the skin. So today I, I noticed that I like it more if I mix it in with a moisturizer. But today I use, these were in the Ipsy, Huxley Sacred of Sahara Mask Oil and Extract. And my face, I thought this is the perfect time to try the Charlotte Tilbury again because I know how that usually performs. And I mean, this mask made my face feel so soft there was tons and tons of products product on it but i feel like really really hydrated so i thought perfect time and what i like to do and for contour and bronzer we are using elf what i like to do for my contour is i actually do that underneath my foundation a lot not always but sometimes the reason for this is i have a little bit of a heavy hand so sometimes I can get a little much and this way you can correct it with the foundation over it and then if it covers too much you just add a little bit more on but for me I feel like it works better and then I'm also going to try out this is the new elf sponge what did I do with the packaging <laughs> This is the angled silicone face sponge and you're supposed to use the silicone side to uh, bounce on the foundation and then you use the other side to blend out. So that's what we're gonna try. Oh, I got a lot on. 
this makes me think of like a bingo dotter, you know, like marker. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Maybe a little too much. So, but let's bounce it out. Bounce it out. Oh yeah, that's too much. <laughs> oh gosh, too much, too much. Anyway, I didn't put any primer on this time. Usually I do put a primer and I spray a mist, but my skin felt really hydrated with that. But this does not seem to, like it's blending in well, the sponge dry even, but it's looking a little dry and patchy. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna have to fix this. I just kinda wanna see, I'm putting it on the sponge and kind of to act as a concealer just to kind of see how that works and I would take a taxi if you never have although if you never have like they can drive kind of crazy is what I remember <laughs> so just be warned at that and I don't know the last time I was in New York was 2008 so right yeah so obviously it's been a while, so I don't know if this is still the case, but there is a lot of noise, a lot of sirens that you hear, a lot of horn honking. Yeah, actually like putting on, I'm gonna try this more, but putting this on and then using this side like for your concealer seemed like it worked really well. Hmm, okay. What I actually found at the time, and well actually every time that I have been to New York, I have found and the New Yorkers really nice. I feel like they get kind of a bad rep, but you know, like they were really nice. <laughs> One trip, I forget what trip that was, but I remember it being like so like, oh my God, this is awesome. Because we were walking around and people stopped me and asked me for directions. And I remember thinking like, oh my God, like, I look, obviously, they think I'm a New Yorker. Like, because I think it was just my mom and I walking. I don't know if that was a trip with my sister or just my mom and I, but um, it's like, oh my God, they think that I'm a New Yorker. I look like I could live here. <laughs> I just was so excited. And amazingly enough, I knew the question. That happened twice on that trip. And I knew the directions. And one, if I, yeah, was like such a random, Thing. It was if I knew where um, Kinko's was, like the copy place. I don't know, is that still around? And luckily, I don't know why I paid attention, but I knew where it was. If you have dry skin and you use this foundation, I would just say, you know, make sure you definitely prime, hydrate beforehand, and you might want to mix it in with a moisturizer or something like that. And it's interesting because I remember, you know, like I said, this is 93 and it was like, I remember going to Times Square and it wasn't that we ever felt like unsafe, but you know, as I mentioned, like, I don't know, there was that trip versus my other trips to New York. There was a lot more homeless on the streets, a lot more like drug use seeing and in Times Square there was a lot of you know like X-rated shops and like I'm pretty sure like peekaboo shows or whatever and then when I went back on the other trips there wasn't as much I mean there was still homeless but it wasn't as much they also cracked down on buying I don't want to get, I don't know what you can say on YouTube. Sometimes they're picky with stuff, but on this trip they had, I remember like in Rockefeller Center and in Chinatown, there was lots of places where you could buy things, mostly purses, but like watches and sunglasses too, that looked like more expensive things that you were getting at <laughs> really cheap prices so they weren't authentic if you know what I'm saying like I said I don't I don't know what you can say there's like certain things that YouTube does not like you to talk about or say so I don't want to get flagged but at the time I will admit 
we did buy some of those items and now I would not but at the time and it was just so weird like they were on the street like there would be a person in Rockefeller Center with a big like blanket down and all these different designer looking things purses sunglasses scarves and I don't even remember how much they were selling stuff for but it was just so weird that it was like just out in the open. The next time I went in 2002, they had definitely worked on cleaning that up and you didn't see any of that type of thing like in by Rockefeller Center or that. But in Chinatown, this is Bobby Brown, Bobby Brown lip color in browning. There is a slight scent to this uh, lipstick if that bugs you can't smell it when you're putting it on but if you go like that there is a slight scent very creamy very easy to apply here is the new elf setting spray blue light micro setting mist I've not used this before it's a very very fine mist there is a little bit of a scent what do you think of my final look and episode one of Get ready with me, chit chat down memory lane of trip to New York City. I don't know, I feel like I need a better name for this series instead of just like chit chat, get ready with me, trip to New York. I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas for names because yeah, I'm like thinking, you know, I want it to do either like just travel or travel and um, deep dive, you know, into the designers and things, but I'm having trouble like coming up with a catchy name for the series, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm thinking like, okay, need your help. So I c these are my ideas. I can do either New York City again, like part two or part three, talking about the different, the three other trips that I took there, or I can then pivot to Europe and I thought maybe go through the places that I've been with this fashion class as well. Or I was thinking that I could do like, okay, talking about New York travel and maybe do part two, or I could focus on a New York designer um, like Donna Karen or Calvin Klein, something, and then do another New York and then go to Europe. And like, if I talk about Paris, then the following week, talk about Chanel, one of my favorite designers to study. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Like I have so many ideas and I love talking about these places. I love talking about fashion designers and fashion lingo and stuff. So I just, I hope that you guys will like this series and that it'll be interesting because I just, yeah, I have so many ideas. I'd like to do it weekly. I don't know. Um, I guess it'll just kind of depend like if you like it or not but let me know your thoughts because yeah my head is just like I sat down and I was thinking okay what do I want my channel you know for 2022 what do I want to focus on and like my ideas if I have more ideas than I have time to film and edit but you know and because I'm thinking like this series and then the purchase or pass I still like that where I compare shadow like the new palettes some of those with shadows that I already have because I've went a little crazy in 2018 and 2019 not so much the last couple years a little bit still but I'm really wanting to get excited about things that I already have use things that I already have so I think that that is a great series great way to do it and then um I know I feel like I'm rambling, but I just I'm excited about it, and I thought maybe you guys would want to know. Um, thinking about incorporating, like I, I really say like I love beauty from skincare to fashion, and I want to incorporate all that. So more skincare products or more skincare videos, also about hair care because my hair is looking pretty dry. I should have went and got it cut when things were kind of more settled and now things are getting out of control again so I'm not gonna go get a haircut and I am not a professional 
but this, this kind of needs trimmed. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but that has led me to start to do more research on what products are good for dry hair. And I know this is like totally on a tangent, nothing to do with New York, but maybe you guys have already clicked off. But if you haven't clicked off and you've made it till this end, till this far, thank you so much. And I'd love your feedback. Uh, yeah, so I guess I will quit on babbling, but this is just to say I have tons of ideas for the new year. I'm very excited about the direction of the channel. I feel like that's what a lot of YouTubers say, but I can see why they say it because it's like you, you know, get your feet wet and, um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just excited. <laughs> quit rambling. This is what happens when I, a lot of times I like kind of jot down notes and I had notes wrote for th things that I for sure wanted to cover. But this is what happens when I don't have the notes like for the ending and I just kind of blah, 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 ramble, 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 ramble. So yes, let me let you guys go. Thank you so much for spending some time with me and let me know your feedback. I really, really would appreciate it. I hope that you have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever and whenever you watch this and that you will let me know your thoughts. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button so you can join me here. If you ring the little notification bell next to it, that is supposed to let you know when I upload a video. Doesn't always work, but it is free to do. And thank you so much again, and I'll see you next time. Bye.